up guys, Alex here from Hoppos with another video for you guys. We are knocking out square body OBS Chevy on bags. Um, we're going to be doing this in sections. Uh, this is actually uh, going to be uh, a section done just the front and then we'll do a video on just the rear and then we'll do a video on install itself. So uh, right now i got the truck pulling in behind me. Bring it in. Bring it in. All right, there we go. Bring it in straight. Stop. Just lining up. Yep. You're all good. Let's get this one lined up. Oh, don't even have to extend it. All right, go ahead, go up slowly. Let's double check everything. Oh, hold on, hold on. Vic, what the hell you got back here, dude? Oh, dude, jackpot. What, what the is fuck? this? What the fuck is <laughs> you liar that's what they all say you got a whole box of nudie mags bro <laughs> such a liar <laughs> i have no idea i mean they're in your they're in this truck it's your truck right and of course it's never done until do the shake test Did you do the shake test all right shook it it's good so on this one we got, uh, it's an 88 OBS. We're gonna be taking off the wheels for the first part. We're gonna be running uh, five inch upper cups, two inch lower cups, studded top and bottom. And we're gonna be running a universal air single bellow. And uh, it's gonna be a pretty simple, quick install for the front end. We're gonna knock this out as quick as we can on videos. Um, we're doing this after hours. This is uh, one of Vic's personals. I don't know how long we've put you off. <laughs> it's been like two and a half years. <laughs> it was like two and a half years before we could get him in and get some time, but better late than never, right? Man, you would have been fired from NASCAR. All right, and then we're going to repeat that for the other side. And then from there, we're going to be getting coil out, shock out. And the shocks can come out by moving got a bolt up here. You can't really see it's dark, but you're gonna have a bolt up on top, two bolts on the lower, and then we're gonna probably uh, cut these coils out because we're not gonna be needing them. So we're gonna probably cut them out and then uh, slightly kick this uh, spindle apart. Take it apart. We remove the cotter pin from the ball joint and uh, what we do is a lot of times the spindle gets stuck onto the ball joint which obviously is a good thing because you want it to you know be strong and, and sturdy in there but what happens is it gets stuck so we use uh, a ball ping hammer and a five pound sledgehammer with this still in place we put it down a couple threads uh, pretty much flush with the bottom and then we're gonna tap it and uh, it's, the coil pressure and the tension will release it and give you a nice loud pop and give you a scare. There you go. Give you a nice little pop. It'll release the tension from there. So that's a quick little trick. Uh, just you know, be sure there is tension on it, so make sure you're safe while you're doing it. And uh, now we're gonna do both sides. Normally what we do is we, uh, when you're working on one thing, you just do the other thing, because you already have the tools in your hands. So you might as well just do the second piece. See a little pop, and it released. Let's get the plasma set up real quick. We're just gonna plasma these coils out of place. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna work, oh, get the camera set up here. We're gonna be working on the bottom side. Uh, take out these two shock hole, uh, bolts, and these are just half inch. And we're gonna repeat that over for the other side. Uh, looks like someone replaced these bolts at one point and there's uh, nuts on the top side. Uh, so we're going to have to get them held in place up on top and we'll remove this side right now. 
So to access the shock bolt, you gotta come from the top side, which is gonna be located inside the engine bay. This one, we have to remove the lower still, Vic. We still gotta remove the lower on this one. The lower? But yeah, it was spinning, it was spinning. Got the two uh, bottom nuts that were kind of spinning on us. I just held with some vice grips real quick. Uh, Vic's up on top, and uh, he's gonna be dropping the shock from the top uh, shock hole. No. Just like that, first shock's out. Moving on to the other side. As you can see right now, he's prepped with the uh, I don't know if the camera's picking that up right there. It's kind of dark. Uh, but he's prepped with the uh, plasma cutter ground on the coil. We're going to be uh, cutting that out and uh, making it simple on ourselves. We're not going to be reusing them, so uh, we just knocked those guys right out in half. Just like that, the second side's out. And uh, now we'll be uh, cutting the coils out with the plasma. So these are the universals that we're going to be using. It is the single bellow. Uh, it is made by Universal Air. And this one right here is going to be running in the front. Uh, this is a two-ply bag made right in the USA, if you see it right there. Boom, made in the USA. And we'll be running this whole truck on 200 PSI. We got the fittings already set in there. Uh, of course, we always use the push lock. It's just a safer fitting. Um, so we're using the push locks here and uh, I got the brackets on the other side. I just got welded up and uh, being painted. So paint's pretty much dry. Dr oh, my voice skipped right there. Paint's pretty much dry. Uh, so we're going to be uh, assembling these. He's cutting the, plas uh, the coils with the plasma. So we're going to jump back and forth right now. So we got the bags all mounted up. Um, inside here is going to be pretty much just two 3 8 bolts on the lower side, two 3 8 bolts on the top side, and of course we Loctite them with red Loctite. Uh, a lot of guys will use blue because they want to make it removable. We want to make sure this isn't going to vibrate off. Even the red is still removable. Don't listen to what people tell you. It's just a lot harder to get off, obviously. But we don't want these to ever come off unless we're just doing a, a surface on it. So uh, that's why we put the red Loctite on there. We did stud the top and the bottom. And right now what we're doing is uh, Vic's actually drilling the holes for the airline. And putting a plastic grommet in there. Almost there. One step more. So it's a little hard to see, but we got the hole right about here. Center where the shock hole is is right about here, so we offset the airline just slightly. That way it clears the arm, but it doesn't interfere with the stud either. So uh, the hole's already drilled, we got the grommet in place right here. It's a little dark in there, so you can't really see it. And of course we're running nothing but the best in here. We are running an Optima battery in here. And this is going to be the Optima D34 that we're running um, in the square body, 88. OBS, what do you call it Vic? OBS? I know a lot of people don't call it OBS, they call it like 80, they call it specifically by the years, but I call it OBS as well. But there's so many new styles now, OBS kind of counts like for my truck up there, the 01. That's kind of an old body style too nowadays. 
So I'm gonna show you a little secret of how we do this. Because uh, you got a five inch cup, you got a two inch lower, and this bag's sitting right around uh, about four and a half, five inches as well. So it's almost 12 inches, let's just say 12 inches, top to bottom. It's gonna be real hard to get this bag in here. So what we do is we have a little contraption. It's a, pretty much it's a hydraulic slow down valve setup. That way we can test uh, the bags with air. But in this case, we're gonna use a reverse. We're gonna put these on. So I'll put this on the airline here. And what I do is I'll just open this up all the way. That way I can push the air out. And I'm gonna use this so I can get this bag Scoot this back a little bit here. So we get this bag pushed down, release all the air out of it. And then I'm gonna close the slow down. That way the bag stays collapsed. So it gives you a little more clearance, a little more uh, room to get the bag in place. And then of course when you feed the airline up, you wanna be careful that the, the airline doesn't get scratched or anything like that. Right there, we got the stud through the top, and the bottom is gonna sit right in that pocket. And then right here, and then I'm just gonna release the air, or open this back up, and you'll see the bag will drop back down into its original shape. This makes it a lot easier on install. That way you're not sitting here fighting it. You guys can see we got the airline coming up right here, and we got our stud right in there and this is the a-arm that you're looking at and this is passing uh driver's side sorry so uh, i got a lock washer got a uh, big washer lock washer and we got the nut on there so we're gonna just push that guy all the way down by hand as much as we can and then from there we we'll get a 9 16 impact or actually we'll probably get an open end uh or we could do a ratchet probably and we'll ratchet this up so you can see right now vic's doing the slow down trick just to make life easier Wash that stud, make sure you don't slip, but. So you got it all closed, and you can see it compressed down almost like two and a half inches, three inches, which obviously the bag's gonna collapse more than that when uh, it's on air ride, when it's all the, way, all the weights on it. But for right now, this is enough just to get the bag in there without having to drop the lower uh, arm or, you know, make it more work for yourself. This is just the easy route. Go ahead, Vic. I got the airline on top. I'll, I'll pull with you. So I don't know if you guys can see down there. There's a little hole. Nope, you're over. Keep going over a little more. There's a little hole down there where the light's kind of shining in and out of right now. Um, that's where we're trying to get the, the stud lined up too. Vic, you want me to spit on it? Please. Every time you spit on it, it always makes it slide in easier, right? Just kidding, sorry guys. So two and a half hours later, we got the stud in there. I guess Vic wasn't used to it. You say he was like, normally feels like little fuzz or hairs around the hole. Is that what you said, Vic? Yeah. <laughs> So you can see we put the flat washer, and then we got a lock washer, and then we got a regular nut. And the reason we like to use a regular nut with a lock washer, because see how he's uh, spinning down really quick right there? It just makes it a lot easier to uh, pretty much progress the nut all the way down to the bottom. And right now I had to grab a flashlight from him, that way he could kind of light, light it up so you guys could see what we're doing. It's a little dark earlier, so. And what you want to make sure too is uh, you, get, you keep your airline in the same orientation as where the, the hole's at. That way you're not twisting or kinking the airline. Um, and that's a major key in this too. A lot of guys will drill that hole and they start twisting the bag in there. And uh, you know, the airline starts wrapping around the stud inside the cup and you don't even realize it. But uh, we got to push uh, the grommet in place now. And once the grommet's in place, and uh, yep, there we go. Uh, once it's in place, then um, we're going to get the lower A-arm jacked up and line up the bottom stud and get the ball joint and cotter pin in. You got the bottom in already? Yeah. Or the ball joint, I mean? Yeah. Oh, ball joint's locked in place. We just gotta tighten it up now and get the cotter pin in place. And then you're gonna repeat for the other side, which I already did, but we're gonna repeat it on this side and you guys will be repeating the same thing. 
And uh, these ball joints on this truck happen to be three quarter. Uh, different makes and models of ball joints are going to be different. Uh, we've seen all the way up to 7.8s, 13.16s. So it just depends on what ball joint you get. So you got both bags in place right there. And right now what we're doing is getting the tires back on. And then from there the bottom side is going to be completely done. We always like moving in sections. So we like doing the whole bottom section first and then move our way up to the next section. So with the tires being the last piece, uh, that's gonna complete the bottom. Then from there, we're gonna bottom front. Then we're gonna get the airline ran and we're gonna clamp everything in place and uh, make sure it's uh, safely ran away from exhaust and uh, any type of heat. All right guys, so after we ran, uh, well actually, sorry, after we tightened up the studs up here, so you get the studs down there. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see, it's dark. I don't got my flashlight on me. Uh, but we just zipped the airlines out of the way. We ran a little heater hose on them on both sides. And well, right now it's sitting up on uh, about 110 PSI. There you go. About 110 PSI. Uh, we're just going to leave it here. This is going to be the, pretty much the end of part one. Because uh, what we did is just get the tires back on. And we just temporarily ran the airlines. Uh, that way we could finish, you know, step two in the next following days when we kind of get a little free night time. Um, so right now we just got a manual Schrader valve hooked up. And, um, hey Vic, you want to drop this guy? And we'll drop it down so you guys can see how low it actually lays. We'll, we'll push it back out of the rack a little bit and drop it down. Uh, we were running a five inch cup upper, two inch lower. Let's probably push it back. That way we don't get too close to the body on the single bellow universal and you can see the gap is pretty extensive what size rims are these Vic? 20s. You got it running 20s so if we're running a 20 you can see the the gap is pretty extensive here let me get this guy pushed back real quick you're clear on my side you just want to clear that corner right there and you're clear and out of the way all right, hit the switches. So you guys, here you guys go, it's tucking. It's right about the lip of the rim, which is nice clearance. And on the bottom, ah, he has about half inch to hit the belly. Right around there, more or less. Ah, it's about an inch, huh? Yeah. You got about an inch gap. So which is actually good. That way you don't have to worry about it if it ever airs out. But I know him, he's gonna wanna go lower. Wanna go lower already, huh? Don't waste your time on a body drop. So guys, that's gonna wrap up our video part one of the OBS, um, OBS 88. Whatever you guys, I don't want you know the Chevy police to come after me. But we do call it OBS, I call it OBS. Um, but we did finish up the front end on that as far as bagging it. Uh, we're gonna get the backside bagged. We're gonna get the backside actually lowered, then bagged. And then we're actually gonna do the compressors and the tank. Mind you, we were doing this in parts and sections because we we're working on his personal vehicle after hours. It is about 8.30 right now. No, 9.30, I don't know. Let me tell you, hold on, I'll tell you right now. It's 9.30, so it's about 9.30, guys, and uh, we're going to wrap it up. Um, we're tired. We want to go home, spend some time with the loved ones, and, well, and then we'll pretty much just be back here tomorrow, and then I have to be with him. That guy. Yep, that guy. So, guys, I do appreciate it. Once again, if you guys don't already subscribe, make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys turn on the notifications so you guys can see my videos and future content. Make sure you guys go on to hopplesonline.com and 
give the new website and the build your own kit a try. If you guys haven't ordered anything, we do have the free shipping on any order over 999. Is that what it is now? I think it is. Yeah, they just updated it, so uh, it is 999 now. Any ship, any order over 999 gets uh, free shipping. So if you guys are in the lower 48 states, you guys take advantage of that on kits. It does save you right around $200 to Texas, 250 to East Coast Texas, and about $300 more or less to East Coast. So and we do pay for that. We cover that. So guys, you guys have a great, wonderful night. Once again, this is Alex from Hopples and Vic from Hopples somewhere over there. Right there, and Vic, remember that cue we did last time? That what? That cue. I give you like the cue. And we're out.